Hey guys, Forks here. Hope you're all well. It's part two of the master system. In this video I'll be 5060 Hz modding this console and I'll also be adding RGB output. So uh, yeah, give me five minutes to set up and we'll get going. As you can see, the shield has seen better days. So I'm going to have to take care of that. Um, if I show you the underside, um, it's actually in pretty good condition. On the bottom side, um, it's just the top side that's gone all manky. Some sort of condensation's got in there, and it's the plating's come off and it's just started to rust. So I'm going to have to take care of that, and right, I'm going to show you that in a, in a little while. But first what I want to do is, because I'm going to be routing my wires underneath the shield and I need to come out, in this direction I'm just gonna cut some of the shield away yeah and then I'll get on and show you how I'm gonna take care of the shield so as you can see I've cut the little hole just allows me to wire the 5060 Hertz and go out the side of the case um, what I need to do next is I'm gonna soak this in white vinegar and that will get rid of the rust I'm going to leave it there for a couple of hours while I do the mod and that will get rid of the surface rust and once that's done I'm going to clean it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and then when that's dried off I'm going to give it a coat of paint just to create a new, uh, an air barrier so the rust doesn't come back um, because the problem is if I got rid of the rust and just left it because all oh, the plating's come off, it's just going to rust again. So I need to, you know, go over it with a coat of paint just to create that air barrier. So I'm going to get this in a bowl, and I'll show you that. As you can see, I have the shield in the vinegar, the white vinegar. Um, I'm using a container, but I don't think it's waterproof, so I'm using a black bin bag just to create a seal. Um, and it stinks. <laughs> it's really pungent the vinegar smell. But yeah, that should get rid of the rust off the shield. So what I'm going to do is leave that to soak for a couple of hours, let it do its magic. And then when that's done, give it a clean with isopropyl alcohol and then give that a quick spray to create an air barrier. So what I could do now is get on with the rest of the mod while I'm waiting for this to do its magic. The first thing I want to take care of before I do the RGB mod is take care of the 5060 Hertz switch. Now if we look at this custom chip by Sega, what we're looking for is pin 57. And if you count from right to left you can get pin 57, but the easiest way to do it is you've got short long short long short long short long it's the fourth long pin so one two three four it's this one just here and depending on whether that pin is high or low depends on whether the system is 50 hertz or 60 hertz and we need to wire in a plus five volts which we can get from here, this is our 5 volt source and just to the right of this capacitor just there is where we're going to get ground from um, and that's what I'm going to do next I'm just going to wire in my 5060 Hertz switch and I'll show you what that looks like once it's done I've isolated pin 57 and um, what I did is I used my side cutters to cut it flush and then trimmed it back a bit and that left a gap and that's isolated the pin and what I've done is I put a bit of electrical tape underneath just in case and what I need to do now is solder my centre pin wire that goes off to the switch and then wire in my plus 5 and ground and that's taking care of the 5060 Hertz so I'll get on with that and then show you what it looks like afterwards and that's the switch wired in. Center pin of the switch goes to pin 57. 
on the right side of the switch is plus 5 you can see that here and on the left side of the switch is ground which is here just here and that's it that's my switch taken care of for the 50 60 hertz what I can do now is get on with the main part of this mod which is the RGB mod just want to show you the components you're going to need if you're going to do this yourself because I don't use um, resistors and capacitors on each of the RGB lines it means my component list is, is pretty small all I need really is a 8 pin DIN connector female Panama to 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor some ferro board and two 75 ohm resistors uh, and that's pretty much all I need and, and a shitload of wire <laughs> and uh, yeah that's all I need and before you say anything yes I do reuse salvage capacitors um, if they're in spec, um, if their capacitance value is in spec and their ESR is in spec, there's no problem reusing them, guys. I don't have a problem with that. But yeah, these are the components you're going to need if you want to do this RGB mod. Um, what I'll do later in the video is I'll show you the wiring diagram and I'll also show you how to cut out your Vero board and how to place the components on the Vero board as well. But yeah, these are all the components we're going to need. I've taken the top shield out of the white vinegar bath. Uh, and as you can see, it's come out pretty well. What I did was take took a Brillo pad and just wiped the surface. And all the rust just comes straight off. Um, yeah, so what I need to do now is just give this a quick coat of paint. Just to add that barrier again because obviously the plate has come off and that's why it started to rust it got moisture in there started to rust so I need to re-add that barrier because if I don't if I just leave it like this it's going to just rust up again so I just need to give it a quick coat of paint uh, and that's what I'm going to do next what I need to do now is take care of the holes for the switch for the 5060 hertz switch and also the panel mount for the DIN connector and what I've done is I've just made up some um, scrap paper with the footprint of the switch and the panel mount DIN connector uh, and what I'm going to do now is just drill those holes um, and then use my files to get them looking nice and neat and that will be the hole for the DIN connector and the switch um, so I'm going to crack on with it as you can see I have the all for the 5060 Hertz switch. What I'm going to do next is take my file and just clean it up a little bit. Um, I've also drilled the all for the DIN connector. Um, same again, I'll take my file, clean that up a bit, and then um, get those two components connected and then have a look what that looks like. As you can see, the panel mount RGB out, DIN connector has been put in and I've also fitted the 5060 hertz switch okay what I need to take care of next is the bottom shield um, I need to cut this away so I can write my wires to the Vero board um, and that's what I'm going to do next Just cut that away I'm going to use a giant pair of scissors um, you can use tin snips if you want but a really good pair of sharp scissors will be able to cut through this so that's what I'm going to do next as you can see finished cutting the uh, shield away what I'll do off camera is I'll just put a bit of black electrical tape along here just to stop the wires rubbing against it when it's you know I put this thing back together and uh, yeah that's that done I can uh, Got on with the rest of it now. As you can see, I've um, finished building my circuit. 
what I did was I sat down and looked at the original master system schematic um, because I wanted to get as close to the original master system schematic as possible the, uh, the way the master system outputs this video and I came up with this um, little circuit board what I'll do next is I'll put a, a picture up of uh, this circuit board and how it's, how it's wired I'll also show you how to make this circuit board out of Vero board and uh, yeah that's what's coming up next I'm ready to perform the RGB mod now. Now, this is going to be the area I'm going to be working because just under here is the video encoder chip, uh, and that's where most of the points are that I need to get to. Um, before I start, no, I didn't do this. This is an original Sega factory botch. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the easiest way to show you what's going on is actually to do the mod and then sh talk you through it afterwards. So I'm going to get on with that and do the mod first. I'm all wired in. Um, I can show you what's what now. I have my quick connect and this is where all the wires go. Uh, and that's going to plug into the circuit board that I made. If we follow the wires up, the first couple of wires we come to these red and black wires. This is plus five. This is ground. What I did was I scraped away a bit of the solder mask and soldered my plus five and ground here um, it's just so I don't have to follow a plus five and ground across the board if I do it there it's nice and neat um, that's used for the video blanking which basically tells the TV to go into RGB mode because uh, we need that plus five for the, the DIN connector and that's pretty much there uh, if we follow the rest of the wires we come along if we go up the first set of wires we come to here are the audio wires this is audio plus I've gone for the video encoder ground I'm using that as the audio ground if we follow the wires back up again we come to the next set of wires now what we can see is the footprint of the video encoder this is a video encoder footprint just there um, now it goes from right to left it goes red green blue out we have our composite out now not many people wire this in but I, I have done this as c-sync out so if you want to use c-sync you can do it. it's on pin 7 of the din now what I need to do now is now I finish this is get it all back together um, what I can do as well is show you the shield um, the paints dried I've give it a spray and it's it's all dry so what I'm gonna do is get this all together and, and let you have a look what it looks like and as you can see, the shield turned out pretty damn nice. It's amazing what white vinegar and the liquor paint will do. <laughs> so I'm going to get this all back together and let you see what it looks like. I'm all done. Just got to put the lid on and we can give it a test. But I thought first I'd let you have a quick look what it looks like. As you can see is my RGB and video signals going into the circuit board comes out and then goes off to the DIN connector on the back you can just about see the 50-60 Hz switch and that's it all I've got to do is put the lid on now and we can give it a test I'm all screwed back together, ready to give this system a test. As you can see I have a game, this time in a cartridge slot. It's one of my favourite games of all time, R-Type. If I just pan up, 
Yep, that's an original R-Type poster. Um, R-Type is one of my favourite games because um, I used to play it in the arcades as a kid. And also, it's one of those games where if you're not very good at video games, you're going to find out because the R-Type doesn't pull any punches. Uh, and that's why I like it so much is because it's really tough. But yeah, let's talking about our type. Um, what I want to show you is the DIN out. That's currently RGB. That goes off to the SCART, which plugs into my SCART switcher, which obviously then goes into my TV. So what I'm going to do now is power the system on. And we'll see if it works. Nice mod. And as you can see, we have RGB out over SCART. Now I can tell straight away that picture is a billion times sharper than it was over RF. What I want to try now guys is the 5060Hz switch. At the moment I'm in 50 Hz, so I'm going to flick the switch and we should switch over to 60. Yeah, and you can tell we've switched over to 60 because the speed of the audio has increased the tempo. Um, but yeah, this is done guys, this video is done. See the Master System 2, 5060 Hz switch modded. Outputs RGB now. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Sweet.